how's it guys? Um, I'm going to be chatting to you a little bit about handling sharks, especially large sharks. I've been fishing probably 25 years for sharks. Um, I've been fortunate to work at Sharka SeaWorld on the animal collection side of things for over 15 years now, which has given me further insight into especially the after effects of handling sharks and fish and things. So I've seen that side of things. I've also worked very closely with the guys at Ori um, with the tagging project. So we've seen the tag recaptures and realized what works, what doesn't work. Um, so I've got a lot of the sort of scientific knowledge. Um, but at the same time, I'm a competitive rock and surf angler. I've represented South Africa a couple of times. I know the reality of what it's like on the beach when you've got a big shark in the shore break. So I'm just going to try and break it down, the difference between best case science and the reality of dealing with a big shark. As a lighty, all I was worried about was just getting a bite and then I'd worry about what I do with it afterwards. Now as a responsible angler, um, before I even choose my location, I will make sure that there's a beach nearby that I can land the fish. The beach gradient is all right, the, the shore break isn't too strong. Um, you don't want to be dragging a big shark over barnacles and mussels and things obviously because that's not, not best case. The onus is on you as the angler to put yourself in the best position to be able to handle that shark well when you get it to the shore break. As much as we're choosing our fishing location to be sure that we can land the shark safely, for the shark's sake, we also have to be careful that we're choosing a, a spot where it's safe for me to go and fetch the shark. As much as it's you know, our major concern that we land the shark safely, we also don't want to go down and try and get it and we end up getting washed off the rocks and we're the ones that end up in hospital. The shark breaks off and swims away with a hook in its mouth and no one wins. You basically want to fish with the heaviest tackle that is practical. You have to be able to cast your bait, you have to be able to get the bait into the bite zone, so you can't always fish with super heavy tackle, but I won't fish for a big shark with less than 50 pound braid or 50 pound mono. Um, and if the fish are close, like in the sardine run in KZN, I'll go up to 100 pound. The reason that we want to go with the heaviest tackle possible is to try and reduce the fight time. So from the time that you hook the shark to the time that you get it onto the beach and back in the water, keep it as quick as we can. The only time where I don't pull a fish as hard as I possibly can is if I'm fishing off a rocky point. I'm not going to pull the shark hard. I'm going to wait for it to pick an angle. I'm going to try and guide the animal off the rocks towards the beach. Yes, it's going to take me a little bit longer. I'm going to spend the extra 15, 20 minutes, take it to the beach where I can land it safely onto the sand, safer for the animal, safer for me, and everyone wins. Um, circle hooks have become kind of the hook of choice for many anglers nowadays, which is a great step in the right direction. Um, the difference between a circle and a J is that a J potentially can hook the shark deep down in his throat and in, in amongst the organs and cause a lot of damage, whereas a circle generally hooks the animal in the mouth where it's easy to remove. Um, the other thing that is very important is to make your circle hook barbless. Um, it just means that the hook is that much easier to remove, so it's better for the animal. Again, we're always worried about just reducing the time wherever possible. It also makes it safer for you as an angler because the less time you're fiddling around near the sharp end, the less chances you are of getting nibbled, um, which we don't really want. So squashing a barbel is literally as simple as just taking your pliers and crimping that barb down. It'll take you 20 seconds to do and it's going to have a drastic effect on the, how easy it is to get the hook out. And in instances where the shark breaks off, breaks a line, cuts you off on the rocks or whatever, Instead of swimming around with a big circle hook and a barb stuck in a throat for the next six months, in many cases it's going to be able to shake a hook out of its mouth in the space of a couple of hours. Lots of people say, oh yeah, but if I squash the barb on the hook, then the hook's going to fall out of the fish and I'm going to lose the fish. It's not really true, especially in the case of sharks. Um, generally, if you've got a good hook set on a shark, especially when using a circle hook, um, in my experience, I don't think you lose any more sharks. So one step that's important and a lot of people don't do it properly is to make sure that you're prepared before you hook the shark. Most times you get to the beach, you throw your bait and you're waiting for your bite and then you get the bite and then it's a case of, oh goodness, okay, now I've hooked the shark, now I'm going to go land it. We get to the point where we land the shark, we get the shark out the water, then we realize, oh dear, we haven't got our pliers, we haven't got our tape, someone needs to go fetch the camera and that shark ends up lying on the beach for five minutes more than it could have. 
What I do, if I know I'm going out for the day and I'm going to fish for a shark, I consolidate just a little a bum bag or a little man bag or a little backpack is very practical. In that, I've got a good pair of pliers, which are capable of removing a hook or cutting a wire if necessary. I've got my tape measure and I've got a waterproof bag with my camera. So those three things just make the process that much quicker from the time that the shark hits the sand until the shark gets back in the water. What's also important in this preparation before the time is that if you've made the decision that you want to tag the shark that you catch, that you have everything ready. So you're going to want to make sure that in your little bag you've got your applicator loaded with the tag, good to go, and you've also got a tool to make a hole in the shark's skin where the tag is going to go in. Get that all done beforehand. Don't wait until you've landed the shark and then go running to your bag to go and fetch your tag applicator. I generally want to look for a beach that's got a, a gentle gradient. So you don't want a, a steep beach with a big shore break, with a big shore dump that's, that's crunching on the, on the sand. I want to look for a section of beach which is more gradual with white water rolling from further. It's that much easier once you get the shark up onto that gentle gradient, it's easier to work it forward and through the shore break. If you've got a really steep lip, that shark often just tugs the back of the lip and it's a mission to get it over. And then when it does come over, it often gets pushed up with a big wave and tumbled and sucked back before you can even get down to it. On any beach, you'll find there's places where, where it's sucking out. If you put a turn of kilo shark into a, a strong rip, there's no way you can hold it. So you'll just go around in circles. You pull it to the beach, it'll get in the rip and it'll get sucked out again. So you want to avoid rips wherever possible. Take your time, get the shark to a point where you can just go in once, get your hands on it firmly and take it out. My rule of thumb is that never go in past your waist when you're going to go and fetch a shark. As soon as you go in deeper than your waist, you lose mobility in the water. The shark is still in its element and the danger for you just gets multiplied hugely. You'll often find that guys will go in quickly, they'll go in a little bit too deep, they'll grab the shark, the shark will struggle and get away and often if you duff it once like that, the shark will then take 150 meters of line, go back over the back bank, and you're in for another half an hour, 45 minutes, before you get it back to the point where you can go and grab it. If I grab there and I move, it's very difficult for me to hold on. What I always like to try and do is when I'm grabbing, a, especially a big shark, is I grab it by the lobe on the end of its tail. So if I can liken it to my hand, I'm grabbing it here, and it can do, there can be a lot more movement here and it's not going to throw me off. I've still got a solid grip on the end of its tail. And it's just that much easier. While the shark is kicking in the shore break, I can still maintain my grip. And as the waves allow, I can start working the shark up the shore break. So a lot of people that don't know say it's bad to pull sharks and move sharks by the tail. Um, I'm not denying that it's according to the textbook, not the best way to do it. But the reality is that we've taken the decision, we're going to fish for sharks, uh, and there is no other safe way, in my opinion, of moving a large shark from the shore break to the point where we can get the hook out, get our photo, and get it back. The things to keep in mind, though, when you're doing that are never to drag the shark with its full weight on the sand. Always, where possible, move it when you've got the water around it. So. You've got your shark, you've got it by the tail, a big wave comes, it almost neutralizes the shark, you can move it with a wave, as the wave starts sucking back, you stop pulling and the shark settles again. You wait a little bit, next wave comes and you repeat the process. I'll often see people will go past the sort of pectoral fin area and that puts you in the danger zone. A shark can have huge movement this way and that way. If you at the tail, it cannot get to you. If you're in front of the, anywhere from the dorsal fin area forward, you're right in the area where it can swing quickly and grab you. That's the other reason why I'll never go in deeper than, than waist deep to fetch a shark, especially raggies. Often, and I've seen it happen, where guys go in too deep and the water actually pushes the shark. Now you're working it back up the beach and the water actually pushes the shark faster than the person can move. What happens in that instance is the shark ends up landing on top of you, pushing you over, you lose your balance and the shark can almost get tumbled over you. And I've seen it happen where guys get bitten. If I've taken the decision to use a tail rope, I'm gonna to wanna to go with a, 
a nice thick diameter, either a really thick diameter rope, or my personal favorite is just a piece of, of strapping, so like safety belt strapping or tie down strapping or something like that. Uh, it just means you've got a nice broad area. If you've got a, a little thin rope and you're trying to pull a 250 kilo dusky shark out of the shore break with it, that's gonna really cut in and bruise, potentially hurt the animal. Whereas if you've got a nice thick strap like this that's pulling on the tail, even when it's really tight, it's not gonna cut in to the same extent. This is the, the tail rope that I'll carry if I'm fishing, especially like in the sardine run times when there's a lot of really big, um, especially duskies around. Um, so I'll just tie a, a loop in the end of it and then it's very easy. Either you can get this under the shark's tail and then with your tag in come around and pull it tight around the wrist of the shark's tail, like that. Uh, the nice thing about having a, a quite a big loop here is what I try and do is you actually end up with two straps around the shark instead of just one. So that just gives it an even bigger area to pull on. So you're not going to end up with as much bruising as if it was just one strap or even a really thin little piece of nylon rope, which I see a lot of people doing. Um, the way I use a tail rope is only to get the shark to the point where I can get my hands on it and move it by hand. So I'll never ever get the tail rope on it and then just drag a shark right out of the water. So once you've got your tail rope on the shark, you're going to want it, if my hand was a tail, you're going to want the tail rope sitting just in front of the tail on an area called the caudal peduncle. So that's a nice anchor point for the rope and it can't slide off the tail. So you've got the shark to the point where it's now safe to work with it. The, generally the first thing I'll do is I'll remove the hook. Um, barbless circle will 95% of the time be located either corner of the mouth and it should literally just be a case of you can generally use your fingers, just pop the hook out. In the instances, the rare instances where a circle hook does get swallowed and the hook is out of reach, then without even worrying about trying to get tools and things to fiddle and go and fetch that hook, I'll just take my pliers, I'll generally pull the wire as close into the corner of the mouth as possible and just cut it off with my pliers as close to the hook as I can and leave it like that. A barbless circle hook generally isn't a problem and the shark will get rid of it fairly quickly. A lot of people think the cool picture, and it's more of like a, an old school mindset, is where you lift the, pull the head back, expose the jaws, and get this like big macho photo. Those days are gone. That's not cool anymore. I don't care who you are. Um, in my opinion, a much nicer picture is just a side on profile of the shark. I'll generally like to sit sort of behind it in the midsection with the dorsal in front of me and slightly lift the, the tail of it. You don't want to lift it so that the, the anal fin and everything is off the ground with a big angle because then you're putting strain on the, the vertebral column. So just lift it a little bit, get the tail off the ground, makes a really cool photo. Generally try and have your cameraman at like 45 degrees to you so it's not straight on. You want like that sort of head coming backwards picture. That's the, in my opinion, one of the nicest. And even better nowadays is if you can actually get a picture with a bit of water around the shark. So you like in the shark's environment with it cool picture of the animal, the angle is good for, the, for you and the fish um, and it's the best case for everyone. That, that should be nowadays a cool photo of a shark. We've got fairly accurate length to weight conversion formulas. So all we have to do is just get an, a reasonably accurate measurement of our shark. What we'll generally do is I'll ask somebody to hold the, the tape on the shark's nose, just run it down the flank of the animal to the precordal notch at the base of the tail get your measurement and that's done. You've got all you need. You can then release the animal. Afterwards, you can go to your cell phone, use the app or whatever you've got, and you can get a fairly accurate weight on your shark. Just one thing to keep in mind when you are taking your measurement of a shark is to take note whether it's a male or a female, because for certain species, there is a difference in the weight. Um, a raggy jumps to mind where your female measurement gives you quite a lot more than a male shark. Um, I think most of you will probably know the difference between a male and a female. That's just the presence of claspers on a male shark. You're going to get it back pretty much the same way you got it out. You're not going to just, okay, I'm going to release it, quickly drag it back to the water. It's better to take an extra 15-20 seconds, wait for the water to come to you. That shark's weight gets almost neutralized a little bit around with the water around it. Same story, I like to hold the end of the tail. If there's a few of you involved in moving a big animal back to the water, sometimes it's necessary for other guys to hold it 
more around the base of the tail just so that they can also get a bit of purchase to move it. The way it comes around the animal, you're just going to move it slowly with the water back down towards the, the drop off, towards the shore break. Um, I'll generally like to, once it starts going with the water, it generally moves quite easily. So what I like to do is, just before I get to the point where I'm now going to go over the shore break, I'll stop. And what happens is, if my elbow is me stopping and the, the rest of my arm is the shark swinging around, I'll stop and anchor myself. The shark will swing with the water until its head is pretty much pointing over the shore break into the deeper water. And as it gets to that point, I'll then let go and hopefully that last little bit of suck back is enough and the shark just goes nose first into the deep water. If you release the animal side on and a, and a wave comes, 90% of the time that shark's going to get pushed right back up the shore break, often to a worse position than you started. What you're trying to achieve is that you're releasing the animal with its head pointing into the waves. The natural response when you let go of a shark or pretty much any fish for that matter is as you let it go, it's going to swim against the current. So if that current is a wave washing back down the beach and your shark is at 90 degrees to the beach, it might even turn and swim against the current but back up the beach. So always make sure when you release it that its nose is pointing out to sea. So basically the most important thing if you are going to handle the shark or carry the shark is don't carry it by the tail. It's dangerous for you because the shark can swing and pendulum in and bite you on the calf, which I've seen happen, and it's bad for the animal. One hand at the base of the tail, one hand under the chest, um, and you're pretty much good to go. The reality is that often the places that we choose to go fishing are also beaches that other beachgoers are using. So it's very important that we accept that a lot of people don't agree with our chosen sport or our recreation. There are a lot of people that are strongly opposed to shark fishing. The most important thing is to just be respectful of everyone's opinions. They're entitled to their opinion as much as you're entitled to be fishing for a shark. Um, just try and be polite and where possible ask the person that you're having a dealing with. Just say, listen, I'm working with the animal now, I'll chat to you about whatever you want to chat about afterwards, but I just want to get this animal back in the water. Um, and then, from personal experience, in many instances, a little chat afterwards where you explain to them the measurements and how much the shark weighs and why we're doing things the way we're doing and how we, all the things that we've been speaking about now in this little clip, how we put that into effect to reduce the stress on the animal. Oftentimes, that person who was vehemently against shark fishing in the beginning, after a 10, 15 minute conversation, you can change their whole mindset and make them realize that, well, we're actually doing the best that we can given the situation that we're in. So just be, just be respectful of everybody on the beach is basically what I'm trying to say. When I started fishing for sharks 20, 25 years ago, the only accepted method of landing a shark was with a gaff, drag it out, a lot of times, there wasn't really any concern about the shark survival after it was released, if it was released. Sometimes we just made a pile of them on the beach. Um, so if you take that mindset of gaff everything, drag it out the water, get your trophy shot, and then, well, whether the shark survives or not, it doesn't really affect me, to the point where now the majority of sport anglers are very conscious of how they're treating the animals. You very rarely see a gaff, if at all, on a beach, um, and people are concerned about doing the best they can to ensure that the shark survives so it can reproduce or so the next guy can catch it again. Yes, we are still having an impact and yes, it is a, it's still a blood sport. We're not going to get away from that fact. But we are trying to do it as responsibly as we can and to try and reduce our impact on the resource as much as is practical.